place is Pelanesburg National Park in South Africa, very unique but kind of small, less than 600 square kilometers. And right after the gate, we have to give right of way to the zebra and then elephants. Well, let's have a look. I think the whole elephant family is kind of just walking around close by and uh, eating and I can see some of them are kind of playing, pushing each other and we will see what happens next. But of course all animals have the right of way and even if they didn't, who wants to mess with elephants? The whole area lies in the root zone of an extinct volcano and it's defined by alternating ridges and valleys forming concentric rings and it's a geological formation that rises abruptly in the form of hills three to six hundred meters above the surrounding plains. The Pilanesberg it sounds kind of German or Dutch but it's named for Chief Pilane who ruled uh, here during the 1800s and the Pilanesberg alkaline ring complex is the park's primary geological feature. It is geologically ancient and as I mentioned, its caldera is completely eroded and it was created long, long time ago, about 1,200 million years ago. And it's unique because it is one of the largest volcanic complexes of this type in the world. Near the center of the park, there is an artificially constructed lake called Mankwe Dam and there is only one perennial river. So uh, you can walk Actually, you can walk around the dam, but only in enclosed fenced off areas. There are some kind of viewing points and you can see crocodiles, you can see hippos, you can see quite a lot of wildlife and a lot of birds. And if you look across this water, there is uh, that tree that I try to zoom in and it, it is a home to weavers birds that kind of create around nests on the on the branches of the tree. So this is the lodge where I am staying and as you can see animals, wild animals are just around the corner, all around you. You go to park your car, you can see antelopes, you open your door in the morning, you can see birds, antelopes and some other animals as well. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? Well, as long as it's not an animal that will possibly attack you, right? It's a little bit misty this morning, but it will be very, very cool. So they say that they have almost 200 kilometers of well-maintained roads here. And in general, I tend to agree. They are passable by a two-wheel car, but if it's during the rain or after rain, that may not be the case because most or some of the roads will be flooded, muddy and impassable if you have a regular car and you will be stuck with uh, asphalt roads. There are like three of them, maybe less than 100 kilometers total, I would say, but still something to think about. And on the other side of this pond, I see warthogs. So let's have a look and here I've just noticed a couple of rhinos. Actually it's two adults and a cute little baby between them and it does make sense because there are lions, hyenas here. So it's good to be surrounded by some adults, isn't it? Lions or hyenas or any other animals would not dare to attack an adult rhino. The baby rhino looks small but it's all relative. I bet he has already around 100 kilograms, 200 pounds. Just uh, it looks small relatively to its mother but in real life it's not that small compared to us. And after the rhinos I have noticed an antelope and I think it's Kudu, quite iconic antelope in South Africa and in Africa and I think it is Kudu because it has white stripes and spiraled horns which is kind of two main things 
that help you identify this kind of antelope. And there are several hundred kinds of birds living in Pelanesberg National Park. And since we are down by the by the lake, I think there is quite a lot of birds in this area. And the ones that I see on the tree in the water, I think there are ibises and they kind of live off the water, I think, because they catch fish and various small uh, animals that live in the water or close to the water or in the mud. And of course, where there is water here, there are crocodiles, so they are putting here the signs to warn people and uh, in general you are not allowed to get out of the cars or safari trucks unless you are in a designated area that is fenced off to protect you from any harm and if you are patient or if you are driving long enough you can see the king of the jungle actually it's not quite correct the lions do not live in a jungle at all. They prefer savanna, kind of a place where there are some trees and bushes, but not a jungle. And this is the king himself. He doesn't give a damn about the trucks and cars. As long as you stay inside, you are safe. And here is his pride around which is basically a group of lionesses that live with him and there is only one lion male in a group everyone else is either females or his offsprings and some of them are walking on the road kind of alongside the cars and there are quite a few more behind the bushes and as you can see they are absolutely not bothered by cars and people it's just a leisurely walk here and of course everyone stops especially the safari trucks because they try to get the views for the customers and that's how it works the best time to look for lions is in the morning or in the late afternoon because that's when they are active actually they hunt a lot at night they are cats after all and their vision is excellent but you cannot be in the park at night and this guy eventually wants to see more so he will back the truck and follow the lions but i think i will continue It is impossible to miss a giraffe if she is standing in front of you on the road. But believe me, it's entirely possible to miss a giraffe, especially if you are looking at the other side or in front of you, or if you are not going slow, slow, slow. It's quite possible, especially if a giraffe is standing behind a tall tree and she actually kind of blends in with her color very very nicely and animals are curious curious about cars about people i guess this one is so maybe we are mutually curious or maybe she just wants to cross the road who knows but probably just cross the road and go back to whatever she wants to do which is probably eating I think I mentioned that there are about 250 elephants in this extinct volcano and this is an ideal place for them. They are protected from poaching by the rangers. Poaching is a very big problem because of the demand from China for ivory and so on. And because the place uh, is in the transition zone between Kalahari and Belt. Both types of vegetation are found here that uh, elephants like or need for survival. And as a result of the park being in a transition zone, there are overlaps in mammals, birds and vegetation. So today, Pilanesberg National Park accommodates almost every large mammal of Southern Africa. And that's amazing because it's really just 
an extinct volcano caldera. It is huge, 550 square kilometers, but nevertheless, it's a relatively small area. And since I mentioned Kalahari and Belt, I should uh, probably explain what it is. Maybe you heard about the Kalahari Desert. It's a large semi-arid sandy savanna in southern Africa. No only in South Africa, but in the countries to the north of South Africa. And it extends to about 900,000 square kilometers, which is like 350,000 square miles. And Welt is a type of wide open rural landscape in Southern Africa. And in particular, it is a flat area covered in grass or low scrubs. And it provides food not only for elephants, but also from various types of gazelles, antelopes, zebras, buffalo, rhino, really everything that you could imagine, you could see in Africa, you could probably see here. Since there are over 200 elephants in only 550 square kilometers, I bet sooner or later you will see them. And sometimes it can be quite memorable. The main thing is to keep a safe distance and be ready to go. Here I was kind of surprised and all I was thinking about at the moment was how do I get the hell out of here in the next second. And here I am again watching elephant butt from a safe distance or at least what I think it's a safe distance. And everything worked out fine most of the time it does. Another encounter I had with elephants was this little staring contest. Actually, I think it was just the leader and mother of a little elephant that wanted to cross the road and somehow they picked the road where I was standing. So after a little bit of thinking, she just uh, walked around the car and everything was okay. So thank you very much for watching, for your time. Take care and goodbye. I hope you enjoyed the video.